This is the uh, third and last video in regards to chapter 9. Uh, this technique is very similar to the earlier video on work cell balancing or calculating the number of workers necessary. Um, there's a lot of similarities between this, but recognize this fact that this is a much more complex model, unlike the work cell balancing where you had a simple set of sequential tasks. Uh, this is more like uh, what we have in, in uh, or at least the diagramming technique is what we have in regards to project management so that uh, you will need to draw that process so that you can see how it lays out. And so that's what I've done here in regards to, uh, uh, I've used data from 9.12 from the end of chapter 9. And so here's the diagram of the process uh, based on the information given me. Um, now this is different than a project, even though we'll diagram it very much like a project. This is an ongoing process, and so the diagramming technique is the same. But we're definitely not going to do a backwards or forward pass and, or anything like that to determine the length of the project. Um, we will add up the total number of ta uh, the amount of time. So uh, task uh, uh, A requires four minutes. Uh, task B requires so mi seven minutes and so on. And so if one person were to do all these things, uh, it would be 49 uh, minutes. Now, we of course um, want to figure out uh, how fast we need to produce, uh, similar to what we did in work cell balancing. So they give us uh, that uh, there are 480 minutes available uh, in our day, which is great because it matches up with uh, uh, our task. Uh, they're in the same units. These are in minutes, and so that's in minutes. And uh, they want us to produce uh, 50 chairs um, per day. And so we have 408. And so the first thing we have to do is calculate cycle time. Now, this is very similar to tack time. In fact, the formula is exactly the same, but they use a different term for it uh, to recognize that this uh, process is different. Uh, so to try and distinguish between a very simple process or the number required or, or, or work cells, the number of workers required for that work cell as compared to workstations. Um, we refer to this, uh, this formula as cycle time in this case. But it's calculated the same way. So we're going to take the total number of minutes uh, available uh, in our day, uh, available time, we'll divide it by the demand, and that will tell us that we have to uh, basically produce a chair every 9.6 minutes to be able to uh, to meet uh, our, our quota for the day, the 50 chairs. Um, we'll calculate the minimum number of workstations. This is similar to the, the number of workers needed. And so uh, once again, it's a slightly different concept because we're not really looking at uh, workers here. We're looking at uh, uh, how we can group activities together to create those workstations. Now within those workstations, you might want to go back to work cell uh, balancing and calculate the number of workers that you would need for that workstation uh, in regards to that. But this is a much broader concept and so we're not really develop, uh, deciding on the number of, of workers, we're actually deciding how to group workstations. And remember this is the theoretical minimum and I'll stress that again because mathematically it just takes uh, basically the, uh, the total amount of, of time here. In fact, let's calculate it. It'll take this uh, so if one person were to do all the tasks just in, in order in the correct process, it would take 49 minutes. Uh, but of course, we have to produce one every 9.6 minutes a chair. Uh, and so we need to group these into five. Uh, that's the theoretical minimum. But recognize that it just took the total time and divided by the cycle time. It doesn't understand the process or that certain things have to happen in a certain order and uh, certain things can overlap. Uh, but in other cases, they can't. And so mathematically, it can't determine this. It doesn't see this picture, but that's where you step in. Now, of course, we will always round up because you can't round down uh, because that would give you less than you need. Um, but because this is just over five workstations, um, that it will affect uh, probably our, our efficiency a little bit um, because it is closer to five than it is to six. But theoretically, the minimum number of workstations, because you always have to have greater uh, you can't have less. Uh, so we're going to theoretically have six workstations. Now, it may, depending on your design, remember this is a theoretical minimum uh, because mathematically it can't tell the sequencing or the process. 
And so you may not be able to combine certain activities because of where they are in the process. Um, so let's go ahead and start doing this. We know we're going to at least need uh, six workstations. Um, I find it easier just to uh, tell what activities are in each workstation than it is to try and do the diagram. Uh, so I'm going to start the process I use. I just start at the beginning and try to group together. So with A, um, I can't combine it with B because that would put me over the 9.6 minutes. I can't combine it with C. So it looks like A will be in its own workstation. And we're probably going to end up with a lot of idle time here. Uh, looks like you know 5.6 minutes worth of idle time here. Uh, uh, let's go on to B. Once again, um, I can't combine it with anything. So B is going to be its own workstation. Uh, looks like we're going to wind up with a lot of, of idle time here in a very inefficient model, but that's simply the way it is based on the process we have here. Um, C can't be combined because that would give us 11 minutes. That would put us over. So once again, C is by itself. Um, D, um, it's by itself. Uh, e is going to be by itself. It looks like all of these are going to wind up in their own workstations because uh, each of the uh, we can't combine any of these uh, tasks to stay under the 9.6 minutes. So we're going to wind up actually with more workstations just because of the process. Um, F is its own workstation. So we are going to have to add it looks like two additional workstations. Uh, so that will hurt our efficiency when we get to those measurements. Uh, so let's. Uh, so we have each task is in its own workstation. Now let's go and calculate idle time. Uh, this has a lot of idle time in it, and therefore you'll see that we'll have a fairly low efficiency number. So really, what we're talking about is the. Uh, you could calculate these really easily by uh, uh, simply taking this uh, and. Uh, Let's uh, absolute that. Uh, we'll let it calculate itself. So uh, that's the cycle time. Uh, then I'm going to go over here and uh, refer to. Uh, so I've absoluted, so it won't move off that. I'm going to subtract then the uh, the uh, the task time. And as I copy this down, it should move to C14 and and on down the list appropriately. So let's. Now I'll copy this and see if we uh, if we have done it correctly. Uh, so we'll just double click on this one. Yep, it's taking this and subtracting the task time. Uh, so we weren't able to maximize uh, any of our workstations. Uh, the sum total then of this, uh, we have a lot of idle time, but that's sometimes just the way it works. Uh, 27.8 minutes of idle time. Uh, so that is our idle time here, uh, 27.8 minutes. Uh, let's uh, calculate our efficiency uh, now. The efficiency, yeah, you simply take the uh, the, the the total uh, task time uh, here, the total of all the activities, as if they were done in sequential order, and then you multiply or you divide that. Uh, by the workstations. In this case, we had to have eight workstations, uh, not, and so that, of course, is going to hurt us because we had to have two extra workstations than we thought we were going to have to have. And the highest we ever got uh, in regards to uh, uh, workstation, it looks like the highest was uh, eight minutes, and so we never came close to maximizing the 9.6 minutes uh, times eight close parentheses and so um, there we go so if we were to format this one uh, let's go ahead and format this as a percentage right now it's in decimal format uh, and so we would say that this is uh, um, 76 uh, percent uh, efficient um, 76 um, or 77 percent efficient uh, so not a great efficiency, but sometimes that's the best we can achieve given the uh, the circumstances we're under. Now, you could go back and see if you could 
save some time. You know, maybe you could reduce some of these times, or or split them into smaller, divide this up so that you could combine some of these things, and make that be a little bit more efficient. Uh, but based on the current model and the current time, uh, we simply have to have that number of workstations uh, to be able to uh, be able to produce a chair every nine point six minutes. And once again, remember this concept of you know, um, you know, station A, you'll have to go through the first time will take, you know, 49 minutes um, for that first chair to come off. But as station A is done, then they will start again. And so once we've gone through the process once, that first chair, then after that, every 9.6 minutes, after we have the process primed, every 9.6 minutes, we will produce in a chair. And so that is assembly line balancing.